Nocturnal Recaps here. Today I'm going to tell you about a movie based on a true story called Mr. Jones. A British journalist sneaks into the USSR to find out the secret of their economic success, but instead he sees a terrible man-made famine. The movie begins with shots of a farm in a wheat field. Inside the building, George Orwell begins writing his dystopia, Animal Farm. He is disappointed that people are indifferent to the fact that the world is being overrun by monsters. So he wants to tell the story through the mouths of pets. Maybe this way people will listen to him. London, 1933. Gareth Jones, an advisor to the British Prime Minister who recently interviewed Hitler, convinces the council that Germany is preparing for war. He suggests an alliance with the Soviet Union, as Britain has no chance of standing up to Hitler alone, but those present only laugh at him. Late at work, Gareth listens to the Soviet radio, which reports on the unprecedented success of Soviet industry. Gareth wonders how the USSR can spend so much money on factories during the global economic crisis. The secretary brings him tea and at the same time the news that he has been laid off. Lloyd George summons him to his office and gives him a positive letter of recommendation. He says that he has always valued him and is sorry for this. He immediately goes to the Soviet embassy to get a journalist visa and personally learns from Stalin the secret of success of the USSR. A little later, he calls his friend Paul Kleb in Moscow. Gareth asks to arrange an interview with Stalin, but Paul cannot help as he is persona non grata. Paul asks to meet with him as he has found something sensational, but at that moment the Soviet telephonist cuts the call. Gareth goes to Moscow, where he meets with Walter Durante, head of the Moscow branch of the New York Times and Pulitzer Prize winner. Gareth asks to arrange an interview with Stalin to ask where the money comes from to which Durante laughs and replies that Stalin's gold is grain. Durante promises that he'll think about his request and invites Gareth to tonight's party. The conversation also reveals that Paul Kleb was recently killed in a robbery. A little later, Gareth goes to the Metropole Hotel, where he is told that he is only allowed to stay for two days instead of a week, and is forbidden to stay anywhere else. In the lobby, he meets British engineers and goes with them to Durante's party. At the party, Gareth asks questions, but no one knows anything as they are in isolation in Moscow. Realizing he won't find answers here, he leaves the party. On his way out, Gareth crosses paths with Durante's assistant, Ada Brooks. She asks to drop off some documents on Durante's desk, as she doesn't want to go in there herself. Gareth takes the girl home, and during the conversation it becomes clear that Durante is fully subordinate to the Kremlin. Gareth asks the girl out on a date and she refuses, but in the morning Gareth still goes to Ada's house uninvited. Gareth firmly believes that Paul was investigating the economic success of the USSR against the backdrop of the global economic crisis. Ada turns on some music so they won't be overheard and tells him that Paul was killed on orders from the Kremlin and that the subject he was interested in was Ukraine. After picking up his things from the Metropole, Gareth checks into another hotel with the help of a bribe. There he forges his letter of recommendation and informs Ada that he is going to Ukraine. After arranging a meeting with Maxim Litvinov, the Soviet Minister of Foreign Affairs, Gareth cunningly secures a trip to Ukraine to see how things are going in the military factories and whether they are ready for war. In preparation for the trip, Ada gives Gareth Paul Klebb's notebook with a map of the places he was going to visit. Gareth puts the groceries in his bag and says goodbye to Ada. The girl begs Gareth not to go as she is worried about him, but he is firm in his decision. A short while later, Gareth and his escort are on the train. After waiting for the man assigned to him to get drunk, Gareth escapes from him and boards another train that resembles a freight train. The atmosphere in the carriage is gloomy. The passengers just keep quiet and stare at Gareth eating his orange. Finished, Gareth throws away the skin, which the passengers immediately pounce on. Gareth asks one of the men to sell the coat, 
but he refuses the money and asks for bread in return. Exiting the train, Gareth comes across the corpse of a man lying on the ground, to which the others pay no attention. As he walks further, he notices men under the supervision of soldiers loading grain. Moving closer, the soldiers put him to work as well. Gareth asks the old man where all this grain is being taken, and he replies that it is going to Moscow. The old man immediately goes to the soldiers and reports a suspicious person. The soldiers try to arrest Gareth, but at that moment Gareth throws a sack from which wheat spills out. The hungry crowd immediately pounces on the grain, allowing Gareth to escape. After breaking away from his pursuit, Gareth comes to one of the deserted villages. Entering a house, he notices pieces of bark in a bowl. As he walks further in, he sees an elderly couple in bed, either asleep or dead. Frightened, Gareth runs out of the house and makes a short halt outside the village boundaries. He arrives at another village where he is greeted by a crowd of children who are caroling, but their carols are creepy. He wants to take a picture of the children, but at that moment they steal his bag of food. Gareth goes further and notices two men walking beside a cart with dead bodies. They stop near the body of a woman with a baby crying over her. They load the mother onto the cart and put the still living child after her. Gareth leaves the village and continues on his route. After spending the night in a tree, he tries to eat a piece of bark out of hunger. In the morning, Gareth encounters a wolf, but the animal does not attack, not wanting to waste energy on a living man. A little while later, Gareth goes out to the barn and decides to take a little breather in it. He wakes up to a noise and notices two children gathering branches. Gareth helps the children pull the sled, for which they treat him to meat. <laughs> Gareth tries to find out how Kolya got the food but the kids just remain silent. He leaves the house and sees Kolya's body. Gareth decides not to stay here and goes to the city where the streets are full of breathless bodies. Near a house with a picture of Stalin holding wheat, workers are given bread, but obviously there is not enough for everyone. He asks a woman in line how this could happen in a land that could feed the whole world, but at that moment he is grabbed by soldiers. A short time later, the British Embassy in Moscow reports that six British engineers had been caught and accused of espionage. Meanwhile, Gareth is taken out of his cell to meet with Litvinov, and he sees the same engineers in the corridor, among them acquaintances from the hotel. Litvinov offers him a deal. Gareth will return to Britain and write that he has seen a prosperous country where there is no famine, otherwise the six men will be killed. Gareth agrees and is released. As he leaves the office, he meets Durante. Gareth asks how much Stalin is paying him for his silence, then gives him a piece of bark that is eaten in Ukraine and tells him to put it next to his Pulitzer Prize. Back in Britain, Gareth goes to meet a publisher, who introduces him to George Orwell. They discuss a forthcoming article about the Soviet Union, but Gareth replies that there will be no article as six people will die if he does. But Orwell changes Gareth's mind, saying it is his duty to bring the truth to the world. Sometime later, Gareth gives a report on the situation in the Soviet Union and Ukraine in particular. After this speech, Durante summons Ada Brooks to his office and forces her to write a rebuttal article about Gareth's statements, but Ada refuses. Meanwhile, the Prime Minister summons Gareth and demands that he take back his words, worried about the already dire state of the UK economy, but Gareth is not going to do it. A couple days later, Durante uses his authority to write a scathing article about Gareth, refuting everything he has said, thus completely destroying Gareth's reputation. Thanks to Durante's article, Gareth loses his job and goes to work for his childhood friend's local newspaper. There he is informed that he will work on cultural news, forbidding him to write about politics. One day he learns that the famous publisher William Hurst has arrived in the city and immediately rushes to meet him. When he arrives at the estate, Gareth is refused entry, but he sneaks in through the kitchen. 
Hurst orders the uninvited guest out, but Gareth draws his attention by saying that he has information that Durante is lying and Paul Klebb was killed for knowing the same thing as Gareth. Gareth manages to convince William Hurst and he publishes his article, which causes a great resonance in the world. A few days later, Gareth receives a letter from Ada. She writes that she is proud of him and that he did the right thing by writing this article. In the final scene, Gareth leaves George Orwell's house, heading off to meet the unknown.